the house isn't his alone. It belongs to the four of us. He should know that. If he was an honorable man. Andre is the one in debt. Let him do as he pleases. It's disgraceful. Anyway. You and I are not poor. I work, take my classes, give my private lessons. I'm a plain, honest man. Only a mere mecham porto, as they say. <laughs> I don't want for anything. The unfairness of it disgusts me. You go, Pedro. You're tired. <laughs> Rest. Sleep. Uh, and I'll, I'll sit outside and wait for you. I'm satisfied. 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 Yes. <laughs> Yes, really, our Andre has grown smaller. How he's snuffed out and aged with that woman. He used to want to be a professor. And yesterday he was boasting that at last he'd be made a member of the district council. Proto Papa was chairman. The whole town talks and laughs about it, and he alone knows and sees nothing. And now everybody's gone to look at the fire. But he's there alone, in his room, paying no attention, just playing on that stupid violin. It's awful. It's awful. I. I can't bear it any longer. I can't. I can't. Throw me out. Throw me out. I can't bear it any longer. What is it? What is it, dear? Where? Where is it all gone? Where is it all? I forget everything. Everything! I don't remember what the Italian is for window or for ceiling. Love. But in 
order to do one's duty. I'll go. I think so at any rate. I'd have married without being in love, whoever it was. I, I should marry him so long as he was a decent man. Even if he was old. But I was always waiting until we should be settled in Moscow. There I should meet my true love. I used to think about him. And love him. But it's all turned out to be nonsense. Pure nonsense. I understand everything. When Baron Nikolai Lovovich left the army and came to us in evening dress, he seemed to me so bad looking that I even started crying. He asked me, what are you crying for? How could I tell him? But if God brought him here to marry you, I would be so happy. I will be different, quite different. <coughs> she walks as though she set something on fire. You're silly, Masha. You are the silliest of the family. Please forgive me for saying so. I want to make a confession, dear sisters. My soul is in pain. I will confess to you and never again to anyone. I will tell you this minute. It's my secret, but you must know everything. You can't keep silent. I love. I love. I love that man. You saw him just there. Why didn't I just say no word? I love her, she is. Stop that! I shan't hear you in any case. What am I to do? First he seemed strange to me. Then I was sorry for him. And then I fell in love with him. His voice. His words. His fortunes. His two daughters. I'm not listening to you. You may talk any nonsense you like, it will all be the same. I shan't hear you. No longer. You are foolish. I'm in love. That means it's to be my fate. It means it's to be my lot. And he loves me. It's all awful. It isn't good, is it? What will become of us? How are we going to live through our lives? When you read it in a novel, it all seems so old and easy. But when you fall in love with yourself, you realize that nobody knows anything. And each must decide for himself. I've confessed, dear sisters, and now I shall be silent. Like the lunatics in Google stories, I'll be silent. Silent. What do you want? I don't understand. I've told you ten times already, Alexander Sergeyevich. In the first place, it is not Alexander Sergeyevich, but Excellency. The firemen, Excellency, ask if they go, go across your garden to the river, as yes, they have to go right now. Uh, right, right, it's a nuisance. All right. Tell them it's all right. I'm tired of them. Where is Olga? Olga? I I'll come to you for your keys in the estate cupboard. I've lost mine and I need to use yours. <laughs> what a huge fire. It's going down now. Hang it all up.